What's up, everybody? Andy from StarWars.com here at Lucasfilm headquarters. This week, so much crazy stuff happened on Rebels. We saw the Inquisitors come back, Yoda, Vader, Ahsoka, the thing with Kanan. Oh, I can't wait. Let's just get this episode started. Rebels Recon starts right now. Thwarted by Inquisitors at every turn, Kanan and Ezra seek Ahsoka's assistance on locating a safe place for a rebel base. It's times like these that Anakin and I would turn to someone like Obi-Wan or Master Yoda. Traveling to the Jedi Temple on Lothal, the trio must embark on separate paths to receive the answers they seek. Last time we spoke to Master Yoda, we were separated. Maybe this is my path alone. There, Ahsoka discovers the truth about Anakin. Yoda tells Ezra where the rebels should go next, and Kanan is knighted by a surprising former Jedi, all before narrowly escaping the Inquisitor's grasp. The Jedi are growing in their power. It will be their undoing. This week, our Jedi had some pretty heavy realizations inside the temple. I sat down with cast and crew to talk about what it was like bringing Ahsoka and Anakin into the show, whether or not the Grand Inquisitor was really a temple guard, and how Ezra has grown during his journey. Check it out. In what ways has Ezra grown since his last visit to the Jedi Temple? He's grown in the responsibility he has within the Rebels because now they rely on him for a lot more than they did at the beginning. The first trip to the Jedi Temple was kind of to teach Ezra and expose him to certain things. And this trip to the Jedi Temple is almost like a mission of sorts where he needs to get something from the Temple. In Kanan's vision, the Grand Inquisitor was shown as a Jedi guard. Was this true or was this just something that he envisioned. We talked to Dave when we were developing who the Grand Inquisitor was and where the Inquisitors came from. They became apparent that yeah, they do have Jedi roots. Ultimately, the visions created in the temple are a means of communication for Yoda to instruct and teach these young Jedi. The vision of the Grand Inquisitor is entirely motivated by Yoda who's basically letting Kanan know that he is a Jedi Knight. Now that Kanan has been made a Jedi Knight, what does that mean to him? The fight that Kanan has, that's sort of his Skywalker moment. He doesn't win until he realizes not to fight, which not many Jedi ever reach that. And that's very rare in, in the history of Star Wars. What was it like having Ashley and Matt work together again as Ahsoka and Anakin? It was weird. It was a weird throwback day for all of us because they used to work together all the time. But I'd been searching for a way to to get Matt on the show. He could do many voices. He's very talented, but I wanted him to be back as Anakin. For Ahsoka and the relativity of her journey, you have to understand who Anakin Skywalker is, and you have to understand it within Rebels. Before you've gotten involved with the show, were you able to enjoy the first season of Rebels as fans? I definitely enjoyed the show as a fan, but secretly, uh, publicly, I tried to act like I was a bit more indifferent because I didn't want to give it away that Ahsoka came out at the end of season one. I really liked it. It's a really fun time in the Star Wars saga. Something that I really enjoy about it is seeing more of the Empire, kind of the behind the scenes. The first act of Shroud of Darkness implies that Anakin and Ahsoka were together immediately before the events of Revenge of the Sith. Has Dave given you any hints as to what happened in those final moments together? Not really much at all. Dave likes to keep things tight, but Dave is so aware of things. If, if, we, if we needed a piece of that, for this performance, he would fill us in. I've tried to give as many clues as I can as to what did happen after she left the Jedi Order. For now, I have to treat the characters with the experience that I know they had. So Ahsoka can't lie. She can't say, the last time I saw Anakin, I walked away from him at the Jedi Temple. No, 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 because she has seen him since then. She was involved in a very important mission at the end of the Clone Wars. We've gotten to tell a critical piece of her story, one that I wasn't sure I'd get to tell after Clone Wars stopped. Rebels has really been a benefit, not just for the people working on it, but to continue the story of a character that they all have been a part of creating. We're so close now to the end, so, you know, it's exciting. Today, I am gonna have you analyze and look over all of these uh, analytics charts from Recon this season. If you could uh, get those into a report for me by the end of the day, really appreciate it. <laughs> Last week, we learned that the Geonosians might all be dead, but a lot of you pointed out that that's not exactly true according to the comics. So I tracked down the Lucasfilm Story Group's resident comic book guy, Pablo Hidalgo, for answers. Watch. All right, Pablo, 
Yeah, what's up? Let's talk Geonosis. Okay. Bowtie Pasta asks, Rebels Recon, so in Vader number one, it's shown that Geonosians are alive and mixing with droids. But in Rebels, they're nowhere to be found. Why? Well, actually, that is Vader number four, not Vader number one. But it's a good question. In that comic, we see Vader go into the depths of Geonosis, and he finds a surviving queen that has been sterilized and going nuts and is building droids instead of hatching new Geonosians. Something bad happened on Geonosis, obviously. Vader went into the very depths of the planet and found this survivor. When our rebels arrived there a few years earlier, they really didn't have much time to do that thorough a scan. Mm -hmm. So as far as they're concerned, all the billions of Geonosians are gone. How we get from rebels to Vader and what might happen in between is storytelling we're going to tell in the future. Exciting. Yeah. Thanks, Pablo. No problem. Got questions about Shroud of Darkness or anything else you want to know about Rebels? Tweet it to at Star Wars using the hashtag Rebels Recon and we'll answer what we can online. Now, Star Wars Rebels and Rebels Recon are taking the next week off, but we can't just leave you hanging like that, so we have an exclusive clip from our next episode, The Forgotten Droid. Enjoy. <laughs> Ah, I see someone's interested in a new strut. One that matches. <laughs> Don't worry. I won't charge you an arm and a leg for it. <laughs> Thanks for watching Rebels Recon. We'll be back in two weeks with another brand new episode. In the meantime, check out our episode guide for Shroud of Darkness on StarWars.com, or if you're in the mood for a vacation like us, head to your local Disney parks for a chance to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Seventh Sister in Jedi Training Trials of the Temple. Click here for more. I'll see you later. Hey everybody, Andy from StarWars.com here again at Lucasfilm Headquarters. This week we saw Zeb and Kallus form an unlikely alliance in the Honorable Ones, and now, as usual, I'm here to take you behind the scenes. So grab onto your mysterious glowing rock things. This is Rebels Recon.